Hi, my name is Jeff Robbins. I'm responsible for defining the strategic direction for PeopleSoft's technology platform, including the PeopleTools product suite. I recently had a very interesting and informative discussion with my friend Duncan Davies at Succeed Consulting. You might know him as the PeopleSoft tipster. We were talking about a question that I'm often asked by our customers. Are there any affordable and effective tools available for automating many of the processes associated with monitoring and managing a PeopleSoft environment? Of course, there are high-end, often expensive enterprise class solutions out there. But Duncan mentioned that he'd recently had some success with a few open source products that do the job particularly well. I think PeopleSoft customers will be very interested to know about these types of products that can truly help them manage the overall cost of ownership for their PeopleSoft applications. I'm excited about the work Duncan and the others that succeed are doing these days, including, of course, helping PeopleSoft customers get the most out of their investment in PeopleSoft applications. So I encourage you to find out about Succeed Consulting and discover what they're up to. Hi, my name is Duncan. I've been working with PeopleSoft for more than a decade now, and um, I still enjoy learning new, new tips and tricks. I recently came across an open source application that I think a lot of clients could benefit from, so uh, I thought I'd share this back with the community. I work for Succeed Consultancy, who are a UK implementation partner. We've, uh, we've grown quite quickly and there's about 60 of us now, two thirds of which are permanent staff. And we have a, a, good, a good deal of experience between us. Many of us have more than 10 years experience. And we're pretty well spread amongst the client sites in the UK. I want to talk you through today monitoring and automating PeopleSoft, both with the same tool. So what do other clients use? First of all, there are commercial solutions, ranging from the PeopleSoft specific solutions up to those that will take care and monitor your entire enterprise. These tend to be fairly expensive uh, pieces of software. Secondly, you could build up some batch files and some cron jobs to do the monitoring for you. These obviously have a high setup cost, they can be uh, quite large and unwieldy to maintain, and they're not very flexible. Alternatively, you could do nothing and just wait till the user tell you that something is wrong or something is not booted or not responding. This is, um, this is the case in more than one client that I've worked at. I also looked at other open source solutions, Xenos, Nagios and Puppet, but they're all either Unix only or had limited Windows support and needed extra software to be loaded on the server, so Python or Ruby or, or something like that. And as I needed a solution that was both Windows and Unix, uh, Hudson and Jenkins was the obvious solution. So Hudson and Jenkins are essentially the same product that has recently been forked. So now there are two products and I'll use them interchangeably here, but uh, to a large extent it doesn't matter which one you use. The installation is dead straightforward, you just download the executable uh, and run it and install it as a service on Windows and you're done. There's nothing else to configure, so no Python, no Ruby. There are hundreds and hundreds of plugins available, so whatever you want it to integrate with, you'll be able to find a plugin to do that. Um, it runs on Unix and uh, Windows and it runs on master and also slave nodes. You can f trigger actions on those slaves from the master. This slide shows you the type of company that are using Hudson or Jenkins. Uh, you can see from some of the logos that this is a, uh, pretty much a who's who of, of Web 2.0 companies. Jenkins and Hudson have a web-based UI, so they're really easy to administer. If you see in the middle here, I've got all my jobs listed with monitor to start with as their monitoring job, then the environment name, and then the function they perform. To the right of that you have the processing statistics for the last time they ran and on the far right you have a button to trigger the job. On the left hand side you have the build queue, so what's queued ready to run and then below that you have what's actually currently building. When you click the job name on the Jenkins homepage you come into a screen like this. This shows the job name at the top and also shows that it's parameterized. I don't want to set up the same job multiple times for once for each app server or process scheduler, so I can override the parameter at runtime. Next, it shows where the job is run. This one is run on a particular node only, so this would be appropriate for an app server, say, which is only on one server. Next, you can schedule a job. So this one runs every 10 minutes between certain hours, so between 7 in the morning and uh, just before midnight. The next stage shows what commands are run uh, as part of this job. You can see there I have three uh, DOS commands, the first two setting environment variables, and the next one using the TM admin command. And you can add multiple build steps here, you don't just have to have it in, in one, one box there. 
Finally, I want to be notified if any of my jobs fails. This will send an email to the address specified there. This slide gives us some examples of the job syntax that I've used. The top one here is for checking an app server process, so I'm piping the PSR command into tmadmin. The second one is the process scheduler. I'm just using the psadmin command line syntax to check the status and look for a process serve process. The third one, I'm using some SQL to check the report distribution is working. And there are other jobs, checking for processes that have failed, jobs that have taken too long, and ones that should have started that haven't yet, and also checking integration brokers functioning correctly. So that's the basics covered. What else can you do with it? One of my favourite plugins is integration with Selenium. For those that haven't used it before, Selenium is an open source software testing framework for web applications. It's an extension for Firefox, and you can record moving between web pages exactly as you would record a macro with an Excel. You can then play back this test using Jenkins. So using Jenkins and Selenium, we can simulate a logon to PeopleSoft to check that not only is the PIA process running, but it's actually responding. Jeff tells me if the client was on tools 851 or 852, we could have used PeopleTools test framework to do exactly the same thing. We use instant messaging fairly heavily within Succeed, both for collaboration between consultants on different client sites and also with team members from the customers themselves. We've set up Jenkins to post to our chat rooms whenever there's a test that fails. This way we don't have to wait for the email notification. Anyone who's in the chat room at the time can troubleshoot the error straight away. And everybody's instantly aware of what's going on, so there's no effort duplication and everyone can work around the problem until it's resolved. Both Hudson and Jenkins come with smartphone apps, so you can download from the iPhone App Store or from the Android Marketplace an app for your smartphone so you can be notified of any problems with your servers, or you can start a task on one of your servers so you can kick off a backup or a reboot when you're away from the office without needing to go near a PC. OK, that's enough about monitoring. Now what about automation? By changing the command slightly, you can swap a, a monitoring job into an automation job. I've got several simple jobs set up to reboot app servers and bash servers, clear the caches, bounce the PIA, start off ad hoc backups, that kind of thing. It's particularly satisfying when combined with a smartphone app. On more than one occasion, I've had an email or an instant message where someone's been putting in some extra hours over the weekend, and I've been able to reboot an app server or clear some cache or from a couple of button presses on my smartphone without leaving the garden. Once you've got some basic automation tasks done, you can try something a bit more complex. This slide shows refreshing the pre-production database from production with a single click in Jenkins. On the right hand side here, we have our production servers, and on the left hand side, we have our pre-production servers. So the database from production will be refreshed over the top of pre-production. The top two servers are our production and our pre-production database servers, and the bottom two are the production and pre-production app and web servers. The blue components in the diagram are the PeopleSoft part of the setup. Down here you can see this is the Jenkins master, which sits on the pre-prod app and web, and the, um, the master can fire off processes either on the master itself, or it can trigger processes on the, any of the slave machines. So let's walk through those steps. First of all, the master requests the production database server to back up the production database. Next, this backup is zipped on the production database server, but at the same time on the pre-prod app, app and web server, the app server, the bash server, and the PIA are all shut down and the cache is cleared. Next, the zipped backup is copied across to the pre-production server. The next step on the pre-production database server is to unzip and restore the backup of production onto the pre-prod database. Next we change the access ID, because obviously the credentials are different between production and pre-production. Next we run some database cleanup SQL, for example things like clearing audit tables, clearing PS access log, that kind of thing. And at the same time on the pre-prod app and web server, we run some database cleanup DMS scripts. Things like clearing down the process monitor and report distribution. The next step on the pre-production database server is to rename the report node change the server definition to point to this new report node, swap the web, web profile, and change the database name and PS options. At the same time on the pre-prod app and web server, we boot the app server. Next step on the pre-prod app and web is to rename the integration broker node, and there's actually an app engine program that does this, so we have, the, have Jenkins far off the app engine. 
and at the same time on the pre-production database server, if it's appropriate, we scramble the data. This probably wouldn't happen in pre-prod, but it's parameterized, so the option is there that if it's a test or a dev database, the data is scrambled. Finally, step number nine, we boot the batch server. And that's the process complete. Everything started from a single press on the Jenkins master, or even fired off from a smartphone, and the process completes start to finish in about 40 minutes because so many things can run in parallel. This marks the end of the webinar. I hope you found it useful. There are some links below to the Hudson and Jenkins websites and also Succeed and the Oracle Videos website. Thanks for taking the time to listen.